Good morning everyone, it is Thursday the 29th of June and it is 6.16am here in Tokyo, Japan. And today we are going to be taking the bullet train down to Sendai for a day trip. Without a JR pass. Probably shouldn't do this without a JR pass because it is really expensive. But by the end of the day I should have taken every single Shinkansen rolling stock that has left from Tokyo Station. So I'm pretty excited about that. So let's head down to Tokyo Station and get on our train. road which you didn't get any footage of was the Senzan line and I would almost recommend coming through Sendai instead of Yamagata just to ride it because it had like great really like steep hills and rivers and valleys on each side so I would definitely recommend riding it it's really nice so 
Well, as expected, it is quite busy. But just look at that approach. So apparently the specialty here is cherries. So I might try a cherry ice cream. So my verdict on the ice cream was that it was delicious. The red, it wasn't as red as I thought it would be. But it was delicious. Now, <coughs> believe. Here we go. Oh, some stairs to some tunnels. Also, one thing I love about this country is these stone tablet things. I just find them really cool, you know, like like that, just like pulled out of the game kind of thing. And that noodle stand whatever it sounds smells so good. Might stop by there for lunch. Uh oh, this is Stuff here is just packed so closely together. Like, like all of this stuff is. Well, it's like or something. Another point of interest, which is this thing. to pay something, 300 yen. It's okay. For all of this. So I would say that's worth it. <laughs> so how do you get up? Oh, you can't get up there, I don't think. But there is another monument thing. The top of some steps tucked away up there. Anyway, it's time to pay the entrance fee and climb up. And the start of the climb. I'm already looking forward to this. Look at the stone steps and leave the cup and green and all these stone monuments. I am already looking forward to this one. I mean, actually, look at this. Like, I've only walked for 10 seconds. This already feels like I'm climbing up to some kind of like ancient temple in Pandaria in World of Warcraft or something. Like Australia is like has none of this kind of historical attraction. Doesn't have any temples in mountains. But when you come to a country like this and go to this kind of place, you can really see that the fantasy, or that, yeah, that the fantasy is actually based on reality. Because in Australia it's just like, there is nothing like any of this at all. So... Oh well, I didn't even notice this thing. <laughs> Alright, here we have... Well, we're gonna head up there. 
actually look at that. I'm already excited for that, but look at this. We have some kind of rock wall with carvings in it and coins, offerings, literally stuck. Stuck in every single possible. And find this gate. Look at this gate. Actually look at it. Look at this approach to this gate to so like cinematic and picturesque. the entire way up and somehow there's like autumn colored trees around it I don't know how but it's cool anyway there are this gate inside it I've got all these stickers which I don't know what they're for <laughs> We have continue upwards. And I'm gonna show you guys this little picket thing. Just kidding, there's a whole amazing view over here. Look at it. Look at it. No. It's like this mountain is pretty much just like a whole collection of temples. Not sure which way I should go first. Because I forgot the map. <laughs> oh, okay, just let me walk along this path. Look at, Look at the view from this path. I'm just gonna look slowly. Also, I noticed that all of the glasses in the lanterns are the cherry design, signature product of this region. And all of these are business cards showing people who've been here. <laughs> Oh, wow, so many business cards. Some faded. And now we get to see this. This is the view over the you're supposed to climb up here, probably not, but it doesn't say you can't. So, I see stairs, I climb them. It does look like people used to climb in there or something, but obviously no longer. We do get a pretty good view up here. Anyway, time to continue on. That caught my eye. Look at that. You can actually see that above the roof structure. There's actually another window. I would love to live in a house like that. Literally built into the rock and accessed by a rickety ladder. That is so cool. I don't think we're allowed to go over anywhere over there, unfortunately. Even though there are signs, like tourist info signs. Look at all those under the rock, under that crag there. Look 
like the modern curtains and stuff inside this building, it does look like they're actually actively being used for like some activities or other. So it's pretty cool. More barred off areas. It's a pretty cool moon motif here. We continue going. Now it seems like we have another bottle, please. And it actually looks like people might live here or something. We can't go up there. Gotta make do with this complex. Yeah, very ornate looking lantern, I guess. Graveyard and the smell of incense in the air. And it looks like this is the highest we can go. The path that goes any further is over here and it is closed off. So it looks like this is as far as we can go. climb that but we probably can't. Anyway, that is Yamadera. That took a lot shorter than I thought it would. Might actually make the one o'clock train. Of course this is an incense burner as it is a Buddhist temple. People riding their things. We'll just come over here and then we'll see you at the bottom of the mountain. <laughs> Again, the cherry design. Nice looking lotus at the bottom of that text there. Uh, it's in spur. And that is the temple complex highest point that we can get to. I didn't go up here before and I absolutely love the design on the skates. The Sakura design, it's so nice. Right. Time to show the view which you're probably more interested in. from here, which is next to this thing, so let's do it. So here we are back at the bottom of the temple complex. Thing for some reason. With a cat. That's actually pretty cool. I'm gonna take a better shot of that. There we are. The 
leaving at the temple complex. And of course, because this is a temple complex, not just a temple, we have more to see even on the way out. So we've got another big building here. And we will exit by these stairs, by this rock. And underneath the rock is actually a storeroom, that's really cool. And then we'll just head from here all the way down back over to the station over there. Alright, let's go. Again, I'm going to admire the clarity of the water in the Japanese mountain streams. And here is the station again. So we're back here. Right, just to remind you, we have been up there. So here are the region specialty Yamagata region cherries. 350 yen per pack, the second shop from the station, the first shop from the station, the closest one, 500 yen, so I wonder if the other one, the, the next one would have been like 100 yen, so I'm gonna find out how good these are. Hmm. They have a unique tart taste to them, which is really nice. So I, like, I, I would say that even though that was only like an hour and a half and it takes longer round trip to Sendai than you actually spend in the place, it was still definitely worth it. Definitely. Also I want to say like I want to stop off at every station on this line but with trains once an hour it's just not possible unfortunately because every station after you get out of Sendai is actually really nice anyway, we have our train coming oh. oh the headlights are up the top because before when we were in some of the really long tunnels I was like does this train even have headlights I don't see the reflection of the headlights on the rails and they're up the top so no wonder because I was like if there's no headlights hurtling down those tunnels at those gradients is actually really scary for the drivers so anyway here's our train and see you back in Sendai Subway seems to be really new. Like all the stations and the interiors of the trains all feel really new. Wonder when it was built. I'm guessing this is. Oh, okay. It was destroyed by the earthquake. But I'm guessing it was some kind of gate before. Oh, that is cool. Did you. The road that people drive on actually leads through this gate thing. That is cool. It doesn't look... What type of that is? It doesn't look good. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, there's just something really nice about the road being right next to this huge castle site. Like winding up it and actually going inside the site. It's just something really cool about that. Right up there. Castle entrance with the tiny gate, of course. So as you can see, the road we just took actually follows the historical path of the way people would have walked up to this castle. And today you have a modern road for cars following that. There's just something so cool about that. Anyway, here we are at the castle site proper. Well, uh, here we have... You can see why this location was picked to be a castle. because of its commanding view over the entire city of Sendai. Also, just want to point out, I just want to point out this. There's actually a giant Buddha statue also in Sendai that we won't have time to go there today because it's a bit annoying to get to because it's not right off one of the train lines. So. The view from Sendai Castle site, aka Alba Castle. And now let's go into the castle itself and take a look around. And here we have a majestic eagle statue. We've seen a whole lot of a bird that is, but we have seen so many of them. Hawk, eagle, I don't know, but we've actually seen so many of these birds soaring in the Japanese coastline, so I think that it is definitely appropriate that there is a statue of one. So here yeah, is obviously a shrine that's being Japan and that's pretty cool how you can look right down here, right down that grassy loop thing through to the actual shrine. Also one thing that's really refreshing that there's no one here. This would never happen in Tokyo. There would always be people here. But there's no one here. It's actually no one. Zero. That is a really shiny stone tablet. Some waterfall. It is, it is called Notaki. See, even that, even though this is like all in English, showing that it's a touristy place, there's no one here. That's really surprising, and I like that a lot. So, it seems like that is pretty much the entire place. Unless we loop around the outside, which... Oh, wait. Mm. Yeah, I don't think that is a waterfall. Okay, so the reason that there is absolutely zero people up here, except for one single tour group before, is probably because this is a castle site, not an actual castle. That was just a site where a castle was built. There was not actually any intact buildings there. But, like, still, this is a really nice place. I don't regret coming, like, an hour out of the way to come up here, even though I said I originally wasn't going to. But anyway, I'm on one bar of battery, so I better head over to Matsushima. Now here we are outside Matsushima Kaigan Station. Now Matsushima is supposed to be one of the three great views of Japan, but today being not sunny anymore, well it was before but it is no longer sunny, don't think it is going to be quite as impressive as if the sun was out, but it was a really good so let's just go check it out. And I'm going to be careful of my battery. So this was supposed to be a park where I could see 
the ocean and the islands, but obviously it is under construction. There's actually quite a few temples around here, and here is our first on an island that kind of juts out. And those are the islands that we're apparently here to see. Supposed to be one of the three great views of Japan. massive bridge over to that island. Okay, so this is the really long bridge from the floor. As you can see, it looks really great, but um, if you saw when I panned over before, that building there is actually closed, and that building on there said tickets, so I'm not actually sure if I'm supposed to just walk over, but it's closed. So, like, should I just go over, or...? So my conclusion is that it doesn't explicitly say no entry, so I'm just gonna enter. And it's really cool how it's, like, super foggy. Thought it would be less cool because it is not sunny, but it is... The fog actually makes it really awesome, and also really sticky. <laughs> I love how there's like little beaches. Anyway, now we have reached this island covered in fog. What mysteries and treasures will it hold? So here on here this island, guess what we got? Shrine. Facing apparently a significant view. I'm gonna get up on this tree stump and try and look at, look at that view, obscured by the fog. And here we have this very cool downhill thing that leads to a beach. Wow. This foggy beach. I mean, I don't even want to imagine what it would be like if it was sunny, because it's actually really nice, with fog. It's actually really cool, and you can't even see the entrance to the beach, pretty much. That is cool as. Oh wow, and I didn't even notice these two caves. Or just like, carved out bits. Really, not really caves. Okay. Time to continue our whirlwind tour of this island because after we spin around it once we should be about time to head back to the station. And look at this. Just look at this. Literally come all the way up to the edge here. Just look out. And here we are at a viewing platform, but tell me, why would you use this viewing platform when there is a clear, better alternative over here? Hey look, isn't this much nicer? Who needs the man-made one when you can stand on the rock at the edge of the... This feels like Kuwait Islands and oh, there's like heaps of islands that are close to each other. And here we have an even better spot. Look, why use the proper viewing platform when you can go to places like this?
proceeding instead of two plus three, but anyway, my camera is completely dead. And so I'll see you back up because I'll have something else to say before we end the video. So now we're back in my room after our 17 hour day. It is, well, technically more 18 because now it's 12 a.m. and we were up at 6 a.m. this morning but I was out I was not in this room for 17 hours but anyway um, as I might have mentioned this morning this video if you are actually watching it still is going to be the last travel vlog I post before I leave Japan so if you are watching this video right now if you are listening to this Thanks heaps for keeping up with my travel vlogs and what uh, in terms of travel after this I will have some friends coming over to Japan um, for the two weeks after semester finishes so I will probably not be filming my well shenanigans with them um, then obviously during that I also have to move out while they go to some of the other cities in Japan because accommodation is expensive and then after that I have what is it 60 odd hours in Singapore which <laughs> I will be trying to do most of the important stuff in Singapore during that time and so of course I won't be editing a video every night and then after that I'm home anyway so if you've watched this far, um, there's probably going to be about a week, uh, no, like a two or three week rather, break before the rest of the travel vlogs come up. There's probably going to be a talking video on the night before I leave Japan. But um, apart from that, thank you for keeping up with my travels in Japan and Mm. See you in the next vlog video, I guess.